Hello, ladies, gentlemen, other creatures. Uh, it seems that I'm going live about two minutes late now. That seems to be my um, my norm, to be two minutes late. <laughs> I was discussing with my psychotherapist last week that um, I'm a lot looser with time these days. I used to be very um, obsessed about being on time and I'd get really anxious if I was leaving anybody waiting. <laughs> It was kind of brought up that to be late is bad, so you must be on time. Uh, but yeah, just getting a bit getting a bit looser these days. So I do apologise for being two minutes late. I hope it hasn't inconvenienced you in any way. Did that sound like a, an authentic apology? Maybe not. Anyway, uh, yeah, we've got Jaffa this evening. Jaffa Jeffrey Hussein is going to be talking to us about NLP which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. I won't say any more about it because uh, it's on the event link. And actually, Jaff is a, a much, much more uh, versed in this than I am. So I'll let him explain all about it. As usual, if you have any questions, then you can just pop them in the comments. Questions, comments, feedback, whatever you want. Um, if you go to that little link there, streamyard.com slash Facebook, uh, you can give it permission to show your name uh, so we know who you are when you're commenting. If you don't want to do that, that's fine, but it will just come up as Facebook user has left this question. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to get involved and ask any questions as we go through. If you're enjoying The Hive, you might want to buy me a coffee or even become a member. You can subscribe for seven pounds per month. Uh, just go to buymeacoffee.com slash thrivehive and your support is very much appreciated to keep this thing going. Uh, seems like lots of people are finding benefit here in these talks and the walk and talks and the supports and the book group and meditation and yoga. And it's all free, which is brilliant. Uh, but if you'd like to support us financially, uh, that would be very much appreciated. And thank you to those who have done so already. And finally, before we bring Jaffa in, um, Share the group, please. Let's uh, let's get this support and uh, get the message of talking about mental health and how we can do all sorts of things around holistic well-being and personal development. Let's spread the message wider. So if you know people who you feel would benefit from the group, just invite them in directly. Uh, clicking invite and select some friends from your Facebook page. Bring them in. And um, you could also just share a link to the group on your Facebook page or with your LinkedIn page or whoever you want. The more, the merrier. So that's enough of uh, promoting things. I hope you're well. And uh, let's welcome in Jaffa. Jaffa, thank you for being here. Good evening, Paul. How are you? I'm a little tired but otherwise very well indeed. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me on to the, um, the show, the podcast, the, uh, the entertainment for the evening for, for, for everyone, I suppose. It's, it's what it is. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's a delight to be here. Excellent. Yeah, well, thank you for your time. It's, uh, it's always great to bring some guests in and have some variety, offering lots of different things that people can learn from. So I know there's quite a few people who are looking forward to this session. So, and I'm one of them. I want to learn more about NLP as well. So thank you for being here. So uh, a couple of questions that I ask all of my guests. Um, but before I do that, actually, let's, let's allow you to introduce yourself in any way you see fit. Fab. So yeah. So as as you said, I'm I'm Jaff Hussein. Um, go by the name Jaff. So it's a, a little bit shortened version of of the name. The Jeffrey bit I'll come on to in a in a while because it was a recent addition to the name and it, it kind of links into one of my other hobbies as well as NLP. Um, so my background is I've spent the last 15, 16 years involved in youth and community work. Absolutely enjoyed it. Um, and five years ago I started my NLP journey um, with a with a local company here in the northwest called NLP in the northwest absolutely wonderful training company um, and have been lucky enough to go through all the levels so that there's three primary levels in, in NLP the foundation diploma the practitioners and the master practitioners 
and I kind of completed those one after the other. Um, and next year, I'm I'm going on to become an ENELPTA, in, which stands for the International NLP Trainers Association Certified Trainer. So I'll be one of the very lucky uh, people to be able to deliver NLP training live and to be able to certify people in that, which will be fabulous. It'll be wonderful to see how far the ripples end up going from NLP. Um, apart from NLP and, and my youth and community work, I'm also a, an avid wrestling fan. So I don't know how much you know about wrestling, Paul, but an avid wrestling fan. And that's where the name Jeffrey comes from. So um, early this year, I was lucky enough to um, fulfill one of my dreams of entering the wrestling world as, as a manager, not as a not as a, a body slammer oh. or as a, as a wrestler, but as a, as a manager and commentator. And that's where the name Jeffrey comes from. So I play my alter ego is this very pompous, very um, arrogant, very brash uh, Lord, Lord Jeffrey that I call myself. Um, <laughs> a complete antithesis, hopefully people will realise from, from what I'm like in real life. Um, but it's, it's absolutely fab. And so I decided to, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna add that in my Facebook name and, and we'll see kind of whether promoters ring me up and they go, Jeff, would you like to come and perform on our show or whatnot? So it's a, it's a nice dichotomy of, of stuff in my life, a nice little cocktail of loads of weird and wonderful interests that have kept me really, really engaged for, for a number of years and still keep me engaged. Great. That's that's wonderful to hear. And uh, interesting that you are the second guest in a row who has an alter ego. So um, I'm feeling a little bit left out that I haven't got one now. So maybe I need to develop. There's still time, ego. Paul. There's still, there's still time, Paul. There's still time. This is true. This is true. Marvellous. Wrestling. Wow. OK. So, yes, thank you for introducing yourself. So now on to my standard questions. Number hmm. one is how are you coping if that's the right word how are you experiencing the the lockdown and this new way of being it's been really really interesting for me paul and and i want to start with that word first of all one of the things that nlp teaches you is the the language that we use and how powerful that can be in in the way that we experience the world around us um and and, and i've spoke to a few of my nlp friends saying that i'm, I'm as with many people i'm in a number of uh, whatsapp group chats and there's one that's that's incredibly optimistic you know this is this this is great and, and the world is wonderful and, and we're going to see fantastic change and etc etc and i believe that we will so I think as a result of this, I believe that we will see some change. Perhaps not the change to the extent of, of this WhatsApp group is, is kind of suggesting. At the same time, I think there'll be change. And on the other hand, I've got this very um, challenging uh, WhatsApp group, which in it every day is reported the death toll. The daily death toll is what I call it. And so there's these two extremes that I seem to find myself kind of um, flitting between on, on WhatsApp. And, and the word that I started to kind of use to describe the whole situation was interesting, um, because I think interesting is such a lovely word. It's got such a so it's it's a word dense with kind of very positive connotations. And at the same time, it, it's quite dense with with some of those not so positive connotations. And I think, it, you know, depending on what day you wake up and sorry, what, what how you wake up on any given day, depending on what you're feeling, it could be interesting. So I, I think that's that's where I start is that it's just been really really interesting um f f from every single angle i think the second thing is that um lockdown has positively forced me to do things that i wouldn't normally do and in particular with nlp um so i like i said i, I started my nlp journey back in september 2015 <clears throat> been through all, all three parts of the program um and up until lockdown paul and, and and as well as doing all three elements of the program i've then gone back and assisted on numerous occasions with with my trainer um and it was only until lockdown that i started to have the confidence and the conviction in my ability to support people through the, the times that we're living in and and kind of it, you know had, had lockdown not been around here i probably still would have kind of gone oh well i'm too busy i've, I've got I've got work and i've got family and and i'm assisting and i'm doing it and i've got x what and all that kind of stuff and, and and lockdown came around and i felt how could i do good what could i possibly do during this time to support other people and i kind of realized i had all of this learning that i was selfishly keeping to myself and one of my kind of values has always been and this is kind of how I got into youth work is that if you've had some really fundamental life-changing experiences then it's only right that you give back and and kind of that that's how I ended up in youth work because I had some really fascinating and wonderful experiences as a young man myself and so and so with lockdown I kind of started reaching out to people and started saying look I'll, I'll happily do one-to-ones and, and we can talk through stuff 
and it was incredible it was wonderful it, it, you know it really kind of made me realize actually what what how i can support people and what i can do to just give that person a different outlook on life and, and for me that's what nlp is is hugely about is is having that different perspective and and from that so as well as doing the one to ones i started running some some very small group sessions kind of 90 minutes on zoom and kind of come come along as nlpers and let's discuss what's happening and and let's continue practicing because we we are a community and so it, it's been wonderful in that sense, Paul, because like I said, had, had lockdown not been around, I, I, I know wholeheartedly I still would have been sat in, 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 in my bedroom here going, oh, well, I've got X and I've got Y and, and at some point I'll do something with my NLP and, and who knows when it'll be and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and now I'm, 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 I'm genuinely living and breathing it. It is that kind of thing of it's not just something that I've studied. It's something that I can practically implement, not only in my life. And, and up until now, it has been, you know, making sure that I'm in a, in a good state, making sure that I can kind of get out of a, a not so good state much more easier. Now I'm also supporting people to do that for themselves. And it's it's wonderful, Paul, genuinely, it kind of... I sometimes kick myself thinking, why, why didn't you start sooner? <laughs> and then I'm a big believer in faith, um, or, or I, I, I'm Muslim uh, by by faith, um, and when we call it kismet, you know, it's it's kind of it's meant to be. What's meant to be will be for you at a particular time for a particular reason. So it's 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 been it's been interesting, Paul. It's been interesting. Mm. I like your answer, Jaffa. Yeah, and um, I. <sighs> Did you say it's kismet? Kismet. kismet yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I, I subscribe to that as well. I haven't heard that expression before. I'm not sure I have, but um, yeah, very much feel that we come to things when we're ready, willing, and able to embrace Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And it's, it's great self awareness that you've got there. Um, yeah. Had had lockdown not happened, you'd be probably still procrastinating and thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just wait until I'm a bit more confident or Absolutely. So it's kind of forced you to to go outside your comfort zone. And it sounds like you've really benefited from that. And I can feel your, your passion of supporting other people there. So that's lovely. Wonderful. Okay. So you may have already answered the second question, which is uh, with, with the wrestling thing, but what are your passions? What do you love? Um, so genuinely NLP is a, is a huge passion of mine. Um, huge passion of mine. Um, <laughs> I often talk about that it's life transformational. Um, and, and it genuinely has changed and transformed my life for the better. And when I started it five years ago, I, I never would have thought that it would be that powerful. And, and I'll come on to kind of the story of, of NLP in a minute. Um, but again, wrestling is a, is a huge passion of mine. Um, any sort of personal development stuff, really, Paul, so the stuff that you're doing, anything around kind of supporting people to have much more holistic um, kind of healthier lives, both mentally and physically. So I'm a, I'm a volunteer on a number of different charities in terms of board level and kind of supporting those organisations to do the best for the community. Um, and, and a huge kind of a huge passionate believer in youth work and the power of kind of if you if we give young people the right opportunities at the right time, they can do some incredible things with, with their lives and, and, and with the lives of others. Um, and then like most folk, I think, you know, it's it's kind of jumping on that bandwagon of traveling, even though we can't do any in the current climate. Sorry, I seem to mute myself there. Uh, seeing new places and um, yeah, just just kind of exploring the world and, and, and the wonders that are, are within our world, that the kind of the cultural differences and yet the cultural similarities that 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 this this beautiful earth gives to us and that we kind of often just take for granted going oh well we know we know people are different that's fine it, for me it's about getting in there and kind of really being able to understand what those differences are and kind of um actually realizing that a lot of those differences when when you kind of what we call in nlp world when you chunk up when you start to kind of get more and more vague and more abstract actually those differences are probably similarities mm. And for me, it's it's just wonderful seeing that kind of uh, that kind of uh, stuff in reality. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, I think uh, we all have a unique experience and a unique personality, but there's something a common thread that binds us all Absolutely. together across cultures, races, countries, 
um, you know, socioeconomic things. We, we all have some things in common that we struggle with and some things in common that we that we love. Um, the natural world is one of those things that binds us together, I think. Absolutely. Lovely. Okay. So before we get on to what NLP is and how it can be helpful for people, do you want to talk a little bit about your, your personal journey to becoming yeah. an NLP practitioner? Absolutely. And what brought you there? And if you want to share anything around uh, any mental health issues and your mental yeah. health journey as well, then feel free to do so. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Um, so, so I came across NLP back in uh, the autumn of 2015 and I was sent a um, at the time, I was running my own charity. And, and as you do, you kind of get a number of emails with a number of kind of pieces of information. And one of them just kind of stuck out to me. Um, and it came from a colleague of mine who kind of sent it out to a wide network about, you know, do you want to know what makes people tick? And do you want a greater understanding of yourself and your relationship with other people? And do you want to kind of kind of really understand why we kind of see the world in different ways, et cetera, et cetera, and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, oh, this, this just sounds ever so interesting. And from a very young age, Paul, I've had a fascination with psychology. So I went off and studied psychology at, um, at, at college. And I've also had a, a massive fascination with drama and theatre. So that's one of my other passions. And how, you know, as, as people, we can very easily step into other roles depending on what we need to do and, and drama really taught me that and, and often as a, as a dramatist it was about kind of getting underneath the, the layers of the character and really understanding where that character came from so and I and I hadn't done any personal development for a number of years at that point Paul and so I thought well why not let's let's kind of let's give it a go and so I went on the foundation diploma four days two weekends um, foundation diploma paid for by by the organization um, and and I'm one of them, Paul, that I, I like the practicalities. So so I don't know if my trainer's watching this and, and bless him, hopefully he'll get another chuckle because I've told him about this. But I remember sitting in the foundation diploma for the first day and thinking, my gosh, I don't know what makes people tick. I don't have any understanding of myself. I don't know X, Y, Z, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was really, really frustrated, Paul, really frustrated thinking, I just feel like I've been sold sold something that that's not there um and, and and my trainer is absolutely fantastic phenomenal phenomenal man um with with many many years of of, of, of uh, kind of uh, teaching and facilitating the, the, this this kind of content and what he was doing was laying the foundations and yet jaffa at the age of 25 or whatever i was at the time just 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 wanted something there and then just wanted tools and techniques that I could go with and start practicing with and all that kind of stuff and actually without the foundation support as we know with anything in life uh, my, my train often uses the metaphor of a house unless you haven't got those foundations properly then that house simply does not stay and so I got to the end of day one and I, and I said I turned to my friend and I said I'm not coming back I'm not coming back I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not going back I said look Jeff just give it one more day and we'll see what happens and the second day got a little bit more meatier we started looking at a few more tools and techniques and all that kind of stuff. And even so, I was a bit like, I don't get it. I, I really don't understand the whole premise behind this thing. It, it, it's making no sense to me whatsoever. And so at the end of that day, I went, we're not coming back. Well, I'm, I'm, genuinely, I'm not coming back. And thankfully, I had my friend there and he said, look, we, we've paid quite a bit of money. You know, it's, it's, it's not expensive. At the same time, it's not cheap. Um, we, we've paid and we've invested in this. It's two more days. Let's give it a go and let's see what happens. So day three came around, got a little bit more interesting. Day four was when it kind of really got to me. And I loved your introduction about time, Paul, because day four was when it actually got to me. And, and on the morning of day four, my, myself and my friend had fallen out massively because of the reason of time. And Chris, our trainer, talked about timelines in such a way that, my gosh, it mended our relationship like that. So, so just to give you a bit of a uh, context behind that, um, the, the, I, I always used to end up, so, so let's say I'd arranged to meet my friend at three o'clock. In my head, in Jaff's world, three o'clock is quarter to three. So I would get to my friend's house and, and kind of, I'd, I've, I've always had this kind of pattern really of, of uh, being somewhere slightly earlier than, than I need to be. And, and I think that, again, your introduction was really interesting about sometimes that being part and parcel of, of your growing up and kind of you being nurtured into that. So I'd, I'd get to my friend's house, I'd message him at quarter to three and I'd say, I'm here. And I'd wait patiently and 10 to three, five to three, three o'clock. By this point, my blood is boiling, Paul, because I'm thinking <laughs> you are one route yet, right? And I can't believe you would make me wait. 
And so five past would come along, ten past, and eventually at around ten past three, he'd stroll out of his house and he'd say, I'm here. And by this point, I'm seething, Paul. Going, how, 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 how dare you? How I've been sat here for two, and he's like, well, we arranged to meet at three o'clock. So yeah, I'm a little bit late, but I don't understand what the issue is. And I'm going, issue! Yeah, and, and, and it would blow out into quite a... a significant, uh, and this would happen regularly. So this was a pattern that repeated itself regularly. And, and on the morning of, of the NLP, I just said to him, I said, look, after this, mate, I think we both need a break because I, it's driving me crazy. It's clearly driving you crazy. And I just think rather than driving ourselves crazy, let's just take some time apart and work something out. And like I said, on the, on the afternoon of day four, Chris talked about timelines and how there are two types of timelines. There's a through time timeline and an in time timeline. And through timers, people like myself, what one of our tricks is often we're, we're, we're quite early. We're, we're quite early to things. And actually, when we say three o'clock, well, actually, three o'clock for us is, is slightly a little bit early because we, we just have that sort of pattern in us. Uh, and, and I'm being very quick here, Paul, about timelines because I understand that there's other things to talk about. And, and end timers very much live in the moment. And so for them, it's very much kind of the here and now. And, and one of the things uh, Chris often talked about is for end timers, we get pop ups. So an in time will we'll usually get a pop up in front of them about a particular thing that they might need to do. And so in the in the case of my friend, three o'clock would come around. He'd go right, you know, genuinely at three o'clock he'd leave his house. Go right, I'm I'm heading out now. And what would happen is a pop up would appear in front of his face, going, "Oh well, you've got a cat and you haven't left any cat food out. And oh, you've you've forgotten your wallet, so you need to go get your wallet because you won't be able to do any activities if you're out and about or pay for anything." And and so all of this was, was that, you know, for, for me, what NLP has taught me is, is that all, and one of the presuppositions, and I've got them here around my desk, is all behavior has a positive intention. And one of the things we talk about in NLP is whilst that's not true, so it's one of the presuppositions of NLP, whilst it's not true, to live your life through the lens of all behavior as a positive intention makes your life so much more easier, so much more easier. And so for me, it was right, actually, there was some positive intention behind that behavior. And actually, that was his preference. So in, in NLP world, we talk about these as being preferences. He had a very strong in-time preference. And once you become aware, and this is what I love about NLP, once you become aware of your preferences, then you can do something, if you so wish, to change that. Mm. And actually, your preference might suit you really, really well. So one of the things Chris talks about in, in the training is actually in life, when you're at work and when you're studying, etc., you need to be through time because what through time gives you is an understanding of the past, the present and the future. It's almost as though you can see it linear. When you're in leisure, you want to be in time. You want to be there soaking it in, absolutely enjoying the moment, not thinking about the past, not thinking about the uh, future. You want to be right there in the moment, really enjoying it. Mm. And so for me, that whole, that whole 20, 25 minutes on time, just kind of made me like, I get this, I get this. And then we talked about fate earlier. I, I from, from that course, I immediately jumped on the practitioner's course, which was running literally a couple of weeks later. And that was a further eight weekends over eight months. Um, and then I jumped straight onto the master practitioner's course. And that was a further 10 weekends over, over 10 months. Um, and, and at points I was sat there thinking, I, I really don't understand why I'm, why I'm doing this. There, there were so many points throughout my NLP journey, Paul, where I was going, I don't feel like I'm doing it. You know, one of the beautiful things about our training is that we would start every weekend with um, a kind of a catch up round. So we'd get together in small groups of four or five and we'd kind of talked about how we've been using it since the last time. If there were any questions, just, you know, being able to share some of those wonderful stories and, and experiences. And I would often sit in those catch up rounds thinking I haven't done anything. I, I feel like. A genuine fraud. I feel like I'm coming here and I'm taking up someone's space who really should be here because they probably can use it really effectively and really efficiently and 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 really well. And, and I'm not. And what Imposter I was feeling, syndrome. Absolutely, absolutely, mate, absolutely. And what I was failing to understand was that actually throughout that whole time I was using it on myself because throughout that entire duration I was in a, a very unhappy marriage. I was. Um, really um I, I had some really uh, fragile relationships with, with members of my my direct family who i lived at home with um and so whilst i wasn't going out and doing therapy with, with other people and change work with other people actually 
I was doing it on myself. And first and foremost, that's where we need to begin, as, as I'm sure you'll agree. Um, so I kind of did the Master Practitioners program. And the Master Practitioners was revelationary in many ways. Um, I came to terms with with some some stuff that happened earlier on in my life. Um, as a result of the master practitioners, I ended up filing for divorce from my wife. I moved away out of Blackburn for around eight to nine months um, to get some headspace and clear myself from from everything that was going on. Hugely transformational, massively, um, and and it it was just. It, it, yeah, it was just that kind of thing of, you know, as I kept going through the course going, I don't know why I'm doing this. It was at that point in the master practitioners when I graduated that I thought, this is why. Mm. This is why I was sent on that journey. And so I kind of uh, completed my master practitioners back in 2017. Um, and since then, I've been assisting on many, many courses with Chris, kind of keeping myself really immersed in NLP, really loving it, um, kind of supporting other people on their journeys, which has been so wonderful to see. Uh, one of the things I always comment on is it'd be lovely to take a, a snapshot of people on the first day of the foundation diploma and even on day four of the foundation diploma, because you can physically change. You can physically see changes in people's body language, in people's kind of looks and, and kind of, yeah, how, how they present themselves. Um, and then more so if you were to do it at the end of the practitioner's program, phenomenal, phenomenal mm. stuff. Mm. Um, so I've continued to immerse myself in this. Um, and then like I said, next year will be kind of the final for now kind of um, step in the journey, which is to become a certified NLP trainer um, and being able to kind of run my own foundation diplomas and practitioner programs and mass mm. practitioner programs. Um, so like I said, hugely, I, yeah, I, I, I sometimes look back thinking, Imagine if I just file that, that email away. And again, you know, you go back to Kismet and everything happens for a reason. There was a reason why I opened that email. There was a reason why I stuck with it at the foundation. There was a reason why I got over, to some extent, the imposter syndrome, even though it creeps in every now and again, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, there's a reason why kind of I, I did the journey one straight. And literally, it was Paul, one after the other. It was mm. kind of like jumping. And often people take a nice break because actually it's 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 so full of content and richness is NLP if done properly um, that actually a lot of people go after the practitioners. I just need a break for a few years before doing the master practitioners. I literally jumped from one to the other, um, and all because I you know looking back now I had to. It was written for me to do it that way for me to be in the position that I'm in today. Mm. So absolutely wonderful you know a, a wonderful set of tools or a, a wonderful program um massively like a life transformational um and and yeah you know i i couldn't recommend it highly enough to anyone mm. wonderful thank you for that so it sounds like it's it's an immersive experience and oh, you absolutely. have immersed yourself in it and um i suppose like any uh, therapeutic intervention, any talking therapy, you've got to be immersed in it. You've got to be passionate about it because it requires you to embrace the principles of it. It requires Absolutely. you to change in order to actually deliver it with that passion and that authenticity to be able to, to pass the message on to others. So personal question, feel free to yep. back this back if you don't answer it, but you were talking there about your unhappy marriage and that's ended when you're going through this training process. Do you think that because of your NLP training, what you learned about yourself and about relationships, that made you see your own marriage in a different light or the fact that you could exit it if you wanted to? Or is it, is it was that a totally separate thing? No, absolutely. I, I think for me it was that the NLP gave me the confidence and the conviction, but also some of the reasoning behind some of the the kind of actions that took place. So I, I talked about my all time NLP favorite presupposition is all behavior has a positive intention. And like I said, I went through quite a quite a, an ordeal when I was younger. Um, and the way that was dealt with wasn't wasn't how we would deal with such a thing in 2020. But actually, the, the incident took place in, in the late 90s. And so for me, it's, it was about putting that prism, putting that lens on all behavior has a positive intention. Mm. From my ex-wife's perspective, from my family's perspective, from my perspective, you know, the, the way that I was, I was acting at that time, 
um, externally was was you know Jaff this this jolly wonderful kind of human being who's who's full of love and whatnot. And actually internally at home, I, I was facing some really serious issues. And so for me, it was the NLP gave me that structure. It gave me that freedom. One of the things that it, it made me realize was that. Um, that I had choice and I had control. So going back to Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and, and that whole concept of control and influence, well, actually, being in an unhappy marriage, um, I had control over that. And, and of course, there were cultural connotations around divorce and around kind of separation, etc. At the same time, I had to take the bull by its horns, figuratively speaking, and, and go, well, am I going to stay like this? Do I have control? Absolutely, I have control. And and that was all through NLP. It was also kind of, and, and the, the beautiful thing for me, Paul, is that what, what I really love about NLP, and, and, and Chris, my trainer, often says this, is NLP isn't new. A lot of the stuff in NLP, we as human beings naturally do anyway. What NLP does is it gives us a frame and kind of some labels to kind of go, ah, oh, that's what it is. I, I knew I'd, I knew there was something there that I kind of knew about X, Y, Z. Now it makes sense. And once you become consciously aware of those things, then actually consciously you can start to do something about it. Mm. And so for me, NLP gave me that. It gave me a framework. It gave me a lens. It gave me an understanding of, of my behavior, of other people's behavior. And it kind of said, look, Jack, you've got you know you, you sit there and go you're not in control of this you know you, you're not in control of your marriage you, you can't do anything about it well actually you can and so now you've got one or two choices you can either sit there and continue going along knowing that you had a choice or you can do something about it so for me it was it was hugely like I said transformational at that time because it gave me it gave me permission it kind of was that thing that gave you permission uh, to go yeah do it and, and, you know, often as, as humans, we, we have kind of, again, based on the, the P of uh, NLP programming, we have tendencies to either seek permission from, from other people or other things to do actions, or we kind of just go, I've given myself permission. And I know I'm, I'm the former. I often need permission from others, which, which mm -hmm. is helpful in some ways and, and isn't. In this sense, it was really helpful. NLP gave me that permission to go, do what you want. Mm -hmm. It's your life. And you need to make the best out of it. And, and from that perspective, it was phenomenal. Yeah. So really empowering. Uh, Absolutely. You the things that you have got control over, which sometimes we might forget, might take for granted that this is my situation. I am in it. I can't do anything about it. Actually, many things, many things we can't, like a pandemic, yeah. but our relationships, Absolutely. We, can, we can do something Absolutely. about Great. Okay. So um, the other thing I wanted to pick up on there was that all behavior has a positive intent. And I like that. And it's made me think of nonviolent communication. Are you familiar with that? Not nonviolent communication, no. Okay. Um, so that's something that um, Marshall Rosenberg developed in the 60s. I'm a big fan of it. And I'm working with some clients on that at the moment. And there's a similar tenet behind that, a similar assumption that all behavior, beneath all behavior is a feeling. And beneath that feeling, there is a need. So we all have these basic needs for safety and love and warmth and to be seen and to be heard and all that type of stuff. So if we can stop focusing on the behavior and focus on the need underneath that behavior, that I think is pretty similar to what you're saying about NLP, that all behavior has a positive intent or there's a need there underneath it. Wonderful. Okay, so on to NLP then. What it is, how it works. The floor the, is yours, Jaffa. What it is, Paul, is, is an ever so... In, so I, uh, I think NL, the, the, the name is, is an awful name for a wonderful set of tools. So if you look at the name, it's very technical. Uh, and I think a lot of people get, get oof, oof, you know, neuro-linguistic programming, what is that? And and, and um, I echo Chris's comments here, where I, I often say it's, it, it is an awful name for a wonderful set of tools. At the same time, it was developed in 1970s America. 
in California in particular, where if, if anyone knows the history of, of that time, you know, people were, were smoking various different substances and, and, and therefore I'm guessing that's where the name came from. Um, so like I said, it, I, I want to start off by saying that because I think a lot of people are just straight away put off the name. Oh my gosh, you know, this, this is clearly too much for me. And it's not. It really isn't. For me, it kind of the, the best way that I've heard someone talk about it is, is a friend of mine, uh, another NLP, who kind of said the N stands for neural. So we experience the world through our five senses. And it was interesting, a, a comment that, that you made earlier, Paul, about how we're experiencing the world. You know, myself and my brother who live at the same house within the same four walls, so to speak, both of us would experience the world, even though we're in the same house, in different ways. And so, and that's based on our experiences, our upbringing, absolutely everything. And so the end really is about experiencing the world through your five senses and remembering to kind of associate back into what are you actually seeing? What are you feeling? What are you hearing? What are you tasting? What are you smelling? And in particular, we focus on the, on the first three, the see, hear, feel. The L, the linguistic, is then how, what, what kind of language do you put to those experiences? And, and I talked about this right at the start about the, the, the kind of the, the daily death toll in one WhatsApp group and the absolute optimism in another WhatsApp group. And, and for people who know me, they, they'll know that I'm, I'm generally quite an optimist. Um, and so it's all about the language that we use to, expect, to describe the, those, um, those senses. And, and, and the classic example I can give is, is kind of people calling a drive to London and I used to do this, or, or drive down the M6 a nightmare. Nightmare is such a powerfully dense word with so many connotations that actually we just need to be very careful about the language that you use. And, and, and NLP gently allows you to do that. It allows you to just consider what language you're using and is it helpful? And if it's helpful, con great, continue, you know, because there is some language that we use that is really helpful for us. And if it's not, then what can we replace it with that will be more helpful to the way that you're actually experiencing the world here and now? And the P of it is programming. <clears throat> and, and in essence, if we were to see ourselves like a, a computer, we all have a set of programs. Some are inbuilt in us through through birth and kind of through through childhood experiences. Some of them we pick up, pick up. And as time goes along, often some of our programs get quite dated. And so it's about how do we give those programs an update, a reboot, or even reinstall brand new programs so that we're as kind of um, fast running as some of the, the computers that we often work on at work or at uh, home or whatever it might be. So in essence, that's what it's about. It's about experiencing the world through your five senses, the language that you use in order to uh, describe what you're experiencing and the programs that we have as, as human beings to make sense of the world around us. Okay. Um, yeah. And like I said, a, a wonderful set of tools. So, so we, we can talk about from the presuppositions through to kind of how people make sense of kind of the world and kind of the language that they're using. And what a lot of NLP does is it kind of moves you from where you are presently to where you want to be. So, that, mm -hmm. so it's very much about your present state, your desired state. And the tools and techniques really is that, is that middle bit. So, so it's that kind of, it's the process to get you from the present state through to the desired state. There's a range of wonderful tools and techniques, um, most of which, or some of which, Paul, are content free. So one of the one of the things that I absolutely love about NLP is, is I can often see people, and they don't necessarily need to tell me a whole great deal about what's going on for them, because NLP allows you with some of the tools and techniques and some of the processes to do it content free. Mm. Which is a, a wonderfully different way of um, of doing change work than some of the more traditional kind of forms of of change. Yeah, change sounds work. quite freeing. So just to, I just want to kind of reflect that back so that I've got it clear in my head as well. So so the neuro is the five senses that we use to make sense of the world, and presumably we all have our unique ways of experiencing that. I mean. Absolutely. Uh, there's there those memes that you see on Facebook of a trainer. Is it grey and green or is it pink and blue or whatever? You know, we've got different ways of perceiving stuff. And the linguistic, the language that we use. So lockdown is a good example of that. It sounds really oppressive, doesn't it? But actually, for myself and yourself, we've had a lot of positive experiences in this 
period of time. And then the programming is what we adopt or which gets kind of drilled into us from our parents and society around us, I'm guessing, as we grow up. Absolutely. And and, and some of them we take on, on board, kind of we develop our own programs as well. So Timelines, for example, is a is a wonderful kind of program. It's 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 a way that because we often need a way to make sense of what's happening in us uh, around us. So often we have a, a set of programs which just help us make sense. And and the wonderful thing about NLP is there's no judgment. There is no right or wrong. So, you know, when I was getting really angry at my friend saying, you're not turning up on time. Blah, once I understood why he wasn't turning up on time or on turning up on time, according to Jaff, because for him, he was turning up on time. <laughs> once I started to understand why he wasn't turning up on time, according to Jaff, and once he started to understand why Jaff was turning up incredibly early to his hours, it kind of made everything a lot more easier. And, mm. and like you said, it, it was very freeing. Um, because it removed all of that judgment, it removed mm. all of that you're wrong and you're wrong and, and all that kind of stuff. It, it was kind of really freeing in, in that yeah. sense. Lovely. Yeah. And that's another tie in with nonviolent communication because that whole process is a four step. Ooh. Oh, did you sorry. Leave I've got... a moment there? I did. Yeah, you're back now. <laughs> yeah. so, so NVC has this four stage communication process around. Uh, no judgment, no blame, no criticism. This is just what I observed. This is how it made me feel. This is my request for what I'd like in the future. So that's that's nice. Um, two questions have come in, both from Dave. Hello, Dave. So the, the neuro aspect, we've got those five senses, and Dave is asking with the feel, is that a literal aspect as in to do with physical sensations or are we talking about emotional feelings or are we talking about both so so for me that the what we call the kinesthes so so within within um nlp we have again we have a, a quite a, a strong preference to one or or the other so i know i'm quite a, a visually preference person um the kinesthes that the, the feel is 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 for me both so it's about actually what do you physically feel and what are some of those emotions that that go with it? So, so kinesthes generally feel things much more greater mm -hmm. than, for example, a visual person would. Okay. Um, and, and it's interesting because it comes out in our language as well. So, so it, one of the things that I'd kind of um, encourage some of some of the listeners to is is to think about kind of the language that you use, but also some of the language that you hear other people using, just in day to day language. So I knew I know I use a very typical seeing words language. Mm -hmm. So in my emails, I look forward to seeing you. Um, I hope we can see each other soon. Um, and, and it's I hope that's clear to you. Um, and all you know, and, and so people who have got a very strong auditory preference will use here type words. And likewise, people with a strong kinesthetic preference will, will use quite strong feeling type words and they can feel that as well. Mm. I'm all tingly about our conversation, Jaffa. That, that makes me think that you're a bit of a kinesthes there, Paul. I don't know if you are or not. Um, or, or personal <laughs> preference. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all to do with different learning styles. I remember when I was a teacher, we had to try and adapt lessons because children learn in different ways. Not everyone can sit and look at something. Not everyone can listen for 20 minutes without losing concentration. And I think, sorry, Paul, I was going to say, I think for me, this takes it one step further. So, so the whole personal preferences um, is, is not just for me about teaching, but it's generally how we make sense of the world as well. Um, so so it's, a, it's a classic example of, um, there was a bit of disharmony in, in the organization that I worked for uh, between two colleagues. And um, one of the colleagues kept going, I, I keep going to such a person. I keep going to her. And every time I speak to her, every single time I speak to her, she doesn't give me eye contact. And I don't get it. I just think it's very, very rude. I just, I just think it's very, very rude. And I went, oh, that's really, really interesting. And likewise, um, this colleague came to me and she said, every single time I tell him to do something, every single time I attempt to do something, it never gets done. It never gets done. And so we did a bit of this kind of preferences stuff. And, and the first colleague had a very strong visual preference, very strong visual preference. So if you wrote something down, if you emailed him, it would always get done. The second colleague had a very strong auditory preference. Now, generally, 
or, or sometimes people with a very strong auditory preference, sorry, not generally, but sometimes people with a very strong auditory preference can give you ear contact as opposed to eye contact. Mm. And so the first colleague thought the second colleague was being rude because she wasn't giving him eye contact, yet she could tell me word for word what the first colleague had said. And so for me, that, that once you start to understand people's preferences from that perspective, my gosh, do relationships start to form a lot easier and, and disharmony within organisations seems to kind of come to a come to a minimum mm -hmm. because you then start to go, wait a minute, if I know X person, no. If I know X person has a, a very strong visual preference, then I know to email him and, and all that kind of stuff and I know the job will get done. Yeah, so I'm beginning Rather to understand. Different. Sorry, Jeff, I'm beginning to understand how this can be really impactful with relationships, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. personal relationships also in the workplace because... It's, it's about understanding that person better. And I suppose it comes down to compassion. You know, we're all different. Yeah. And one of, one of the wonderful NLP presuppositions just on that, Paul, is we're as different on the inside as we're different on the outside. Mm. We're as different on the inside as we're different on the outside. And and uh, Chris, as part of his training, will kind of, we'll, we sat around in a, in a semicircle and he says, so, so turn around and look to the person next to you and the person opposite you. And, and just just have a glance around the room and um what what's his line something along the lines of um how surprised are you how surprised are you that no one looks like you <laughs> and we go, we go, we're not surprised not surprised of course we're not surprised. we had to have 20 jaffs to be sat around to be honest <laughs> you know, i think one's enough um and, and it's that whole premise that we're as different on the inside as we are, are, are on the outside. So the way we make sense of the world is in many ways similar to kind of our physical appearance. So some of it's based on biology and DNA. Some of it is on your uh, nurturing as, as we grew up. So, you know, in my brother, there are some people a bit bigger, both tall uh, height-wise and weight-wise than, than other people. And that's all based on kind of your upbringing, the time that you were brought up. Some people have got scars in different places physically because of various different... I, I remember my, my two brothers constantly falling out uh, when they were younger and kind of um, play wrestling and whatnot. And, and a couple of them, uh, and they've got a couple of scars on, on, on themselves both. And, and it's the same internally. We have the same kind of way of making sense of the world as we do physically. And so it, it is no surprise that we all interpret the world ever so differently because, and, and even twins, you know, so even if we look at biological twins who look like exactly identical, well, they don't do they? Mm. Yeah, there yeah. will be some similar, uh, some difference between the two. So it's, it's ever so interesting, that whole kind of concept of you're as different on the uh, inside as you're different on the outside kind of is, is fascinating because when you start to say that, people start to get it. And that's what I love about the style of NLP that, that I've learned. Um, it is it is for everyday folk. You know, I've been taught NLP in a way that everyday folk could understand it. And and I know that there are some NLP trainers out there, both in this country and, and abroad, who teach it in such a technical way that you simply can't make heads or tails of it. Mm. And unfortunately, it's used in such a scrupulous way that people simply don't want to engage in it and 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 what i love about the way that i've been trained and people like myself have been trained is is that we've been trained from a, a position of ethics and we've been trained from a position of doing good in the world and, and spreading some of that that love and that kind of understanding and 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 chris often talks about nlp being psychoeducation it's about kind of ensuring that people understand how they work as, as human beings and how they how they interact with other people sorry mm -hmm. th there was another question i think there was, yes. So, Dave, uh, oh, yeah, there's more. So, uh, going back to content-free, some of the, mm. the stuff that you deliver on NLP is content-free. What does that mean? So, so in essence, what that means is that you don't need to kind of, um, you don't need to give chapter and verse. So, in a one-to-one -one session, it's always helpful for me to get an understanding of exactly what's going on, just so that I can think about some of the processes. And then when we get to that point of going through some of those processes, what you don't need to do is tell me anything about that. So, you kind of go through that process in a way that's content-free. So, you don't need to verbalise what's happening, because a lot of this is internal representations. A lot of what people are, are working on 
or, or kind of issues that, that have some very uh, or can have some very strong internal representations. So in that sense, whereas unlike counselling, we keep kind of recovering all ground, what NLP does is it goes, right, there's a process here. So if I give you a, a, an example, there's a, there's a process called perceptual positions, which in layman's term is standing in someone else's shoes. Mm -hmm. Um, by by kind of moving around different spaces and kind of exploring an issue through kind of being stood in someone else's shoes. I don't need to know anything about that situation. My job as the guide, so in NLP we have two terms, the guide and the explorer. My job as the guide is to simply um, direct the explorer to think about that said situation internally and do whatever they need to do internally. So it's it's very different to some of the other kind of therapies that are around i.e. Like counseling and, and, and CBT, et cetera, because it, it is based on some of it, some of it is based on it being content free, mm. which means people don't need to get into he said, she said, well, wait a minute, but then that it's one of the things that I so I remember before we did perceptual positions, I kind of did a kind of let's stand in someone's shoes activity. And this was before I, I did NLP. And I remember doing it content full, what we in NLP call content full. Um, and I kind of got into the, the, the secondary position, so the position of my colleague. And um, I kind of went, well, yeah, how, how dare he? And, and, and I started to justify in many ways the actions that either I'd taken or the actions or, or kind of put more blame on the other person because I was talking it through as I was stepping into those positions. So it's a position of judgment, which you say you don't do. There is no judgment in the NLP word. What you're doing is you're, you're simply exploring that situation through that lens, but without going, but then she'll say this and he'll say, and then I'm going to, and then you watch, and then this is going to, and then it's all going to kick off. Mm. Without any of that happening, you do it content free. And, and it's, 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 uh, there's an NLP saying here, the unconscious mind is benevolent. And we use unconscious very differently to the way Freud used it. So for us, the unconscious is our best friend. And in actual fact, everyone's got one. And in actual fact, the best thing to do is, is, to, is to really love it and really nurture it and to really, really support it because it is there to look after us. Mm. And so a lot of these content-free processes are about the unconscious bringing up resources and bringing up ideas and bringing up resolutions for that person rather than the person consciously bringing them up. Because the issue with us being conscious is that we often then have to justify or kind of explain away some of our rationale or reasoning or whatever it might be. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Yes, yeah, thank you. One more question, if you're okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so is it difficult to develop an in-the-moment awareness of the type of language that people are using? Um, I'd say yes. And I'd say it takes it takes a lot of practice. If I give you a, a really good example, the word but and the word try are wonderful, are, are wonderfully littered throughout our language, I believe. So, I, so one of the things, again, I'd encourage your, your viewers to do is to just to notice over the next couple of days, the amount of people who use the word but and try. Now, the, the fancy phrase in NLP is everything before but is negated. Yes. There's a, there's a less fancy way, but I'm simply not going to say it because, well, we're, we're close to the watershed, but even so, I still won't say it. And if people want to know what that is, by all means, they can message me. Um, but everything before but is, is a load of codswallop. And yet we use it phenomenally in our language. And, and I was absolutely guilty of this. So I remember throughout most of my professional career, people coming up to me and uh, go, uh, blah, 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 blah. And I go, I get that. I, I get that, but, and what I was basically saying for was I didn't get it and I really didn't care. It was what I felt was important. And I never kind of understood why I was starting to fall out with people at work because I'd go, but I'm getting it. I just clearly said, I'm getting it, but this is a different way to do it. And genuinely, again, if you go back to that all behavior as a positive intention, my intention genuinely pull at that point was to go, I do get it. And, and this is the really special word, is about replacing that word but with and, where so possible. And there's this. So I absolutely get that. And there's this. 
And so even now, I have to be really consciously aware of, and that's not to say you can't use but ever again. You know, I think that would be really, really uh, kind of um, difficult. And I think in some instances, genuinely the word but doesn't negate everything that comes before it. In those instances where you know it does, think about replacing it with the word try. Uh, sorry, with the word and. The second word is try, which is a slippery little bugger. Um, and, and this is a story that, that Chris often tells on, on his training programs about um, kind of, you know, we, we, kind of the word try is, is an, uh, it's kind of effort without the kind of sense of uh, commitment. So you're not committing to that effort. You're kind of going, yeah, I'll try. So, so, so there's kind of, you, you can kind of go, well, I'm going to put some effort in, but I'm not necessarily going to give it my whole 100% commitment or, or kind of energies or whatever. And the story that Chris tells is that um, uh, prior to kind of learning this, he'd kind of, um, if, if there was ever a, a problem in, in, in the house or whatever, he'd, co he'd call up the plumber and he'd say, you know, I've got an issue going on and all, and all that kind of stuff. And the plumber would go, fab, fab, I I'll, uh, I'll try and come around around uh, tea time Thursday. Tea time Thursday, I'll be there. Chris would go, fab, put the phone down. And um, tea time would come on Thursday and Chris goes, I usually have a, a tea about half past five. So half past five, tea time, and I'd be looking and I'd be going, okay, we're six o'clock, half six, seven, half seven. By this point, Chris is going, bloody hell, this guy's a late tea, doesn't he? So this must be a pretty late tea. And that, and that tradesman wouldn't turn up. And so what you need to do is start actually fixing people. So when they say, I'll try to do that, it's about fixing people to actually, let's commit to that. So when is it that you're going to be doing that? And how is it going to be done, etc.? Because I think we're just using everyday language. It is one of those things that we just, it's, it's just so innate in us, you know, we'll try to do this or we'll try to do that. And, and then Chris kind of ends the story by going, you know, I don't know if you watch Star Wars or not, Paul, or if any of your listeners or viewers do, but it, there's that bit when uh, kind of Luke Skywalker crashes his ship in the, in the swamp and um, he kind of goes off to do his thing and he comes back and he's, he's kind of, you know, he's, he's, he's flapping his hand and the ship's moving about a little bit. He's flapping his hand and, and, um, uh, uh, Yoda, or bless him. Please, can whatever. I do the voice? Please let me do go the voice. It. It's it. one go of the very it. few impressions I can do. So, yeah, Luke says, I can't, I'm trying, but I can't. I'm trying, Master. I'll, I'll I'm try, trying. I'll try. I'm and, and Yoda says, There is no try, only do. Is and that that's it, honest to, God, honest to God. There is that one. It, it is do or do not. There is no try. And it's and it, and it is, it is that thing of either do it or don't do it. And if you don't do it, that's fine. Again, that you know, the beautiful thing about NLP is there is no judgment there if you're not going to do it. Just yeah. Absolutely. I do this with my kids. Let's let's drop the word try. Yeah. So it's, and it's and like I said, Paul, it's a, it's a slippery little bugger in that it's 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 almost innate within us. Some of these language patterns are almost innate with us. So going back to to the question that that one of your uh, viewers had was consciously, the more we become aware about the words that we're using. I think eventually it becomes an unconscious pattern of habit. So it will take practice at first. Absolutely. I'm, I'm still in that phase of, of it being practiced because, you know, you've had as long as you've been on, on, on the planet Earth to learn some of these things. So what NLP teaches you to do is to kind of how to flip that and start to learn new, better ways, I believe, of dealing with some of that stuff. And, mm. and it does happen and eventually it becomes like anything else, like walking and talking it becomes an uh, an unconscious pattern for us to do. Um, yeah, we get attuned to it, don't we? And I suppose you know, going back to the the preferences around the senses as well, we can start to pick up, ah, that's someone who uses a lot of auditory words. I hear yeah. you, that type of stuff. So, yeah, it's the more we practice it, the stronger the muscle gets. Absolutely. Okay, another question has come in. You mentioned, hello, Alex. You mentioned the example of conflict in the workplace and using NLP to understand the interaction preferences. Are there any NLP courses that you're aware of that focus on learning NLT, NLP specifically for application in the workplace? So um, the, the training that Chris does, um, so one of the things that I did say to Chris is that because of how transformational NLP has been for me, I'll, I'll absolutely plug it. Um, of course, with the current situation, a lot of that training has been suspended. So it, it, was it Alex who asked that question? Mm -hmm. so, so Alex, I'm happy if, if you want to chat to me on Facebook, I'm happy to kind of either run a session or, or do do a number of sessions because one of the things that I am in the process of building is my own 
kind of uh, NLP slash coaching business. Um, so, so I don't know if, if uh, Alex was on the call when I mentioned it earlier, but I am uh, hopefully this time next year will be a certified NLP uh, trainer as well. Um, so there are there are a number of ways we can do it. You can attend one of Chris's courses. Chris talks about NLP more broadly, and of course covers his, covers examples of of workplace kind of uh, covers a range of workplace issues. Um, and likewise, because I've I've been using NLP in the workplace, I'm happy to also do a session or, or whatever it might take um, as well. Mm, great stuff. So I mean, it sounds to me like it's something you can use. In all your relationships, Jaffa, it's great for workplace, you know, great for conflict resolution, uh, romantic relationships, talking to your kids, anything, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a just in terms of relationships. So there's a a thing called um, there's there's a process within NLP called logical levels and logical levels is is a series of kind of. um, Series of positions, really, for you to consider. Uh, a, a situation around and so it kind of goes your environment so what environment are you in when you are doing x your behavior I'm, I'm testing myself now um your skills and capabilities your beliefs and values your identity your connection and connection can be with with god or or with 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 a religious figure or connection can be with the wider world so so again in nlp it, it's open to interpretation and one of the things we talk about in nlp is that People who stay happily in love and married or or in a relationship, not necessarily just married, but people who stay in a relationship, whether that be a friendship, a a, a, a kind of a, a, a relationship of other sorts, what they do is that they have their logical levels aligned at the top three. So they believe some values, their identity and their connection are very, very similar. By by reverse, those people who don't generally tend to have relationships based on the environment. So a similar type of environment. We love a similar kind of restaurant. We like to go blah, blah, blah. Similar types of behavior and similar types of skills uh, and capabilities. And it's so interesting because it's 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 so true. You know, if, if you look at, you know, if you were to do NLP is based on modeling. So, so kind of finding out what works and teasing what it is about that thing that works and kind of then coming up with a with a, a new model. If you look on the whole at relationships that seem to be doing really, really well, it's because the people in those relationships are aligned at those high logical levels. Mm. And, and if I was to look at me and my ex-wife, well, actually, yeah, we, we had very similar behaviors. <clears throat> We had very similar environments in terms of what we where we like to go to eat out and where kind of the kind of houses we might want to buy or the kind of cars we might want to buy or all that kind of stuff. Actually, from a beliefs and values perspective, we could not be further apart, Paul. And it's just so interesting. So mm. for me, that the NLP just gives you a really good insight and understanding into, like I said, all elements, all aspects of your relationships. And when you start to find that relationship being slightly difficult, slightly challenging, then there will be something in NLP that will help you get focus and reflection and insight into that. Mm. Because the thing is that, you know, we can't change anyone else. And really, we shouldn't be changing anyone else. What we can do is be changing ourselves and and looking at ourselves and, and being insightful with ourselves to kind of go, right, what is it about myself in this relationship? And what do I need to do differently? perhaps to invite a different response. Um, th- there's a wonderful uh, quote up here from NLP, another presupposition. The person with the greatest flexibility of thought and behaviour will have the greatest influence in any interaction. No, they won't. <laughs> I'm t- sorry, I'm being obtuse. <laughs> of course they will. Yes, I was just illustrating that by being the opposite. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's I, I don't know about you, Paul, but I genuinely used to think, well, if I have a, a fix mindset and if I just remain quite stubborn on that then at some point people are going to give in and cave and they're going to go well okay what that cost me that stubbornness was a tremendous amount of energy um, possibly a couple of relationships along the line 
Um, and people probably saw me as 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 and I'll put an expletive there and you can fill in the expletive in whatever way you want. Um and I just sit there thinking, yeah. And and again, you know, when you say these things out loud, Paul, I don't know about you and I don't know about any of your readers, uh, sorry, any of your listeners. Um, but I'm like, that's obvious though. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I'm like, so, yeah. What, what, and it's not, it's, it's you know, we unfortunately we live in a world, I believe, this is in Jaff's world, we live in a world where, everything is kind of fed to us and and none of this we're never reminded of any of this wonderful stuff we're never reminded about the language that we use and how impactful it can be we're never reminded that actually just by being quite flexible in our thinking and our approach will mean actually we'll have much better relationships with people so yeah so that's that's kind of where where my passion comes from really is, mm-hmm. is making this much more kind of visible and much more making people much more aware of it Mm. yeah so again i think it's about compassion and those uh awarenesses of ways Mm. of being so we're not stubborn awareness of patterns of speech and those upper three levels that you talked about of kind of similarities in relationship uh it's funny maybe those should be at the bottom because i'm thinking about that metaphor that you talked about with the house and it's the foundations for me that's the foundations of a good relationship not yeah we both like going to the same restaurant that's going to fade isn't it so yeah interesting stuff interesting is a word that keeps coming up today isn't it (laughs) my favorite word paul it's my favorite word at the minute i'm interested in you being interested okay so another question uh jackie hello jackie's tired did i hear we have to make the unconscious our best friend i'm wondering how that can work when we are unconscious good question so the the NLP line is the unconscious mind is benevolent um, and that the unconscious does things um, for you because they're the right things for you at that time. Um, again, the, the, the training the unconscious to um, be, for your unconscious to become your best friend, we need to spend time kind of nurturing it and, and really thanking it. And um, so as an example, I, I don't know about you, Paul, but often I'm kind of in a bit of a daze. Um, and I'm going, I know I really need to get X done, but I just can't seem to to get it done. Either the words aren't coming out onto the piece of, piece of paper or the plan's not coming to my head. I don't know I need to get it done. And, and, and the kind of typical example that I use is a rapport or, or anything that I know is quite pressing and quite important, and yet it's not happening. And what I do is before I go to bed is I'll say, unconscious, please would you X, Y, Z, and when I wake up in the morning, just give me what, what I need. Thank you. <clears throat> the first time I did it, Paul, I didn't give it a time. So what the unconscious did, bless it, is it woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and I had to get a pen and paper from somewhere and I was frantically searching my room in the pitch black and I, st- I had to start writing. And until I stopped writing, uh, sorry, until it stopped giving me ideas, I didn't stop writing. So the unconscious is your best friend. And if you treat it like one, it will do absolutely anything within reason and, and hopefully within all good in, with all good intentions that you want it to do. Mm, OK, so it, I think this, this... That, it, it will act as that advisor. It will act as that guide. It will act as that mentor. It will be there for you during those times. Now, again, it, it, it is about training that and, and being kind to your unconscious and again nlp can do that and and sorry i didn't catch the name of of the lady jackie jackie Jackie. so again jackie i'm happy to to kind of have a chat with you offline to kind of look at how we do that within nlp world um it is that thing it is benevolent it's there for a reason it's there to and actually our unconscious drives most of our behavior most of the day 80 percent, some people say from walking and talking through to driving. I don't know about you, Paul, but I often get in the car, end up somewhere, I'm thinking, my gosh, how did I get here? So, so you know, unconsciously it does a lot of what, what it does for us, kind of like I said, up to 80%, some people would argue, of, of everyday kind of stuff. Mm. 
And, yeah, and again, I suppose it, sorry, Jeffrey, I think it comes back again to what you were saying earlier about that definition of the unconscious, and you're not using it in the NLP context in the same way that Freud does. Maybe it's more, more like the Jungian definition, uh, or you know, seeing it as the universe or the collective unconscious or spirit, whatever it is, fate. That side of thing, have I got that right? I, I think, I think it's, it's. I think we. So, so the way we look at it is that, um, and, and this is kind of going into some of the scientifics. But every single second, we process, and I don't know how they work this out, Paul. We process two point three million. Sorry, every second, two point three million sensory sensory receptors fire off in our bodies. So every second we are getting 2.3 million pieces of information. And 99.9% .9 of that is dealt with through our unconscious. Mm -hmm. Because our unconscious, for those people who know psychology, will know that actually consciously we can only pay attention to seven plus or minus two items. Consciously. Yeah. So our unconscious deals with a phenomenal amount of information every single day and stores it for us nicely, safely somewhere for that time when we might need it. And blessing Freud, I, I don't know much about Freud and part of me thinks, thankfully I don't. Um, Freud had a very interesting <laughs> view on, on the unconscious. Um, and, and, and I often think, wow, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite glad I haven't studied Freud um, because that can really, I, I, can, I can imagine that that could um, potentially just mess you about a little. So, so my take on it is to kind of, yeah, start to look at the unconscious as your best friend and treating mm. it like so and your unconscious in turn will treat you like its best friend because it's there for a reason. It's there to support you. And it's there to do to make sure that that you know you're well looked after. Okay. And, yeah. And so Jack, Jackie's offering it may be a question of semantics, and she's offering that it may be sub, the subconscious rather than Freud's definition of the unconscious. But maybe we could park that for another day. So Absolutely. I am conscious of the time. <laughs> um, so. Do you, are you happy to continue? Do you think we've covered it? Do you want to just yeah, do a few I, more minutes? If there's, if, there's any, if there's any questions I'm, or comments or I'm happy to answer anything, it's, it's, cool. it's been yeah. an enjoyable enjoyable evening. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're, we're out of questions unless anyone, if you're still, if there's still anything you'd like to ask Jaffa, then please fire it through now. And, yeah, in the meantime, Jaffa, is there anything else that you think is – important that we haven't covered any kind of particular points about nlp which we've not touched on um no i think i think that's a really good start of a 10 i think it's a it's kind of yeah hopefully it's given people some some food for thought and and people can kind of start to explore it in in in, in a way that's right for them. One of the things that I do want to just uh, reiterate is, like I said, um, unfortunately, I think NLP's got got um, a bad rap because it, it, you know, it can be used in a way that is very unhelpful, um, and that is downright deceitful. If I'm being honest, um, so I know friends who who simply don't come anywhere near NLP because of experiences that unfortunately they have had with with either other NLP trainers or with kind of people using it um, on them in a way that wasn't helpful. Um, so, so what I would say is that please be cautious about what you read on the internet. Um, if you want, by all means, you can connect with me via Facebook. I'm in, I'm in Paul's group. Um, and by all means, you can ask me questions through that um, because it is one of those kind of um, subjects that I think um, has got its critics. And, and my gosh, if you to read the Wikipedia page, you'd be absolutely scared by what, people have put on there um hopefully you've, you've seen from this hour and 15 minutes that it's a genuinely transformational kind of uh way of being really it can really help with with st i know people who have had stuff they, they've been dealing with stuff for 30 40 years and nlp within a couple of quick sessions has dealt with it mm -hmm. um so again it, it comes back to that thing about compassion and 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 you know the 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 guide really for me
being and even the explorer being using it ethically and, and efficiently and effectively as opposed to kind of sell you something or to kind of make your dreams come alive or whatever it might be um so so that's just a cautionary tale it's it's just a plea really that um hopefully people are kind of excited and want to know more and um just to be mindful of what what they might read on the internet and, and by all means feel free to connect with me and i can point you in in the right direction of things to read and things to look at great so yeah really important to get a reputable instructor and uh, i think what i've taken from from the talk is uh, some some new knowledge so thank you but also i've picked up on your passion and your ethics and it is it is very much i think certainly in, in yourself grounded in compassion getting to understand that other person stepping into their shoes and from that we can uh, have more positive relationships so that's uh, a lovely thing yeah so lots of thank yous coming in. Very interesting, very interesting. Interesting is the word of the day. So great it's, stuff. It's, it's, you know, when we talk about language influencing behavior, this is an example of it. You know, you say interesting uh, so many times and before you know it, it's, it's there in all of the comments. Absolutely. So if you want to get in touch with Jaffa, don't try, just do. And just do uh, it. Yeah, yeah. There is no try, only do. Mm. I love that impression. I used to go. <laughs> it's the first time I've managed to get a Yoda impression in twice in one session. Uh, so thank you very much, Jaffa, for coming thank in. Thank you. Sharing your time, your expertise, and some of your personal journey as well. Much appreciated. What I'm going to do now is play a song. So I will exit you from the studio. You Feel free to hang around and we can have a chat at the end, or I can message you another time. Uh, so thanks again, and thank you, viewers, for sticking with us and your interactions as well. That was really good. Cheers. Thank you very much. Take care. Right, so the song we're going to play is uh, the brand new number from My Buddies at LOA State. And this is an interesting song. I find it interesting. There's that word again. It's called Blue Skies. And uh, if you're into meditation, you may have come across Headspace and they talk about the blue sky always being there, even though there might be some clouds, metaphorical clouds from a mental health perspective or, uh, um, yeah, uh, how you're feeling, your emotional clouds. Uh, and LOA State have got some very interesting <laughs> messages around personal development, the stuff that Jeff has just been talking about there of making things happen, being empowered to have change in your life and um, seeing that the blue sky is always there. So this, I think, is a really good song. Well, it's a really good song, full stop. But also, um, there's a really powerful message behind it, as with, with, with a lot of LOA State's work. So I shall uh, give you a warning. We are after the watershed, but there's some naughty words in this song. So if you've got any impressionable ears nearby, then maybe uh, send them to bed. And uh, hope you enjoy this. This is a World OK Limited public safety announcement. The state is now on lockdown. I repeat. The state, the state is now on lockdown. Please, Please stay indoors until advised otherwise. You will be rewarded for your vigilance. Today's gross domestic happiness report, all sectors green. We will keep you safe and remember, never want, never need, always have. He needs to say I can relate to nothing That's just me trying to vacate the blame Everything I do takes effect on something I just realized that it feels okay Money one day will count for something Now that I'm high I can concentrate On everything I dreamed I'm an aid or something Love, peace, and a kid, L-O-A I was always told my dream life state Alters my perception, it gets in the way Whatever we see in a dream life state can become a part of your day to day Fuck what they say, fuck what they say Begin operation, evacuate me please Can't you see I'm holding me back I've only got myself to blame Blue sky, 
Imagination to destroy the enemies that you create. Fly right in on the love vibration. Fist take out apathy, guilt, and shame. Sailing on seas of attractive passion. Man, what did I used to do pre LOA? Too many meetings and distractions. Enlightenment force, you must let it happen. One, two, three, go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, go. Change is something you just show. All of those afraid to go. Blue skies. Blue skies. Blue skies. Blue skies. You better believe I can be someone. You better believe I can be someday. Sad in a bar with a beautiful girl. Best car living in LA. Love, peace, and etiquette form a reaction. Mentality will change given time, I'm sure. You're not welcome around here no more. When you leave, please close the door. I was always told my dream life state alters my perception, it gets in the way. Whatever we see in a dream life state can become a part of your day to day. Fuck what they say, fuck what they say. Picking up a race, you need that. You ain't me, please. Can't you see I'm holding me back? I've only got myself to save. There we go, folks. So uh, nicely filmed over Manchester and Bury and Heaton Park. Uh, so what day is it tomorrow? Tuesday, Man Tuesday tomorrow. If you fancy coming along for a natter, 6 p.m. on Zoom, the link is on the event page in the Hive. So I hope you enjoyed this evening's chat with Jaffa and uh, take care of yourselves and see you soon. Bye.